Welcome back. I'm MTG Joe. Today we're going to be f wrapping up our from super budget to non budget uh, Demir mid range control list. Uh, so we've already played an ultra budget that was all uncommons and commons, minus the free Nezahal you get and just the dual lands, which you can play guild gates. We played a moderate budget one that we added, uh, I think it was five rares and two mythics. Um, so not too extensive of an upgrade and now we're playing the non-budget version So you've likely seen a variant going around the blue black Kefnet deck That's playing two Kefnets three to four auger bolus and four pateramanders. So that was basically the starting point of the deck um, I don't like pateramander necessarily main. I know some people are saying it's a two mana five five um, for more budget versions it's okay, but I just I find it lackluster at any point of the game when you play it, I much rather prefer having Thief of Sanity. So if you're playing creatures main, then you could side in Thief because they usually take out the removal. But if you're already showing Pateramander um, and like Augur Bolas, your opponent's likely going to keep in some amount of removal, which then deals with Thief anyways. So might as well just play Thief main. If it goes unanswered with like a Thought Erasure into Thief, you generally win the game on the spot. Um, so the rest of the deck in terms of upgrades is we've added a Search for Escanta to to give us more uh, late game push. Um, this version's playing Charter Course as its draw engine with Thief and Augur, that's how it's spurring. Um, maybe wrong, you may want some number of counters. This version's playing no counters whatsoever in the main, um, which against controls been a bit problematic, but we'll try it out. Um, you know what, I don't like the Charter Course. Uh, let's go Sinister. Okay. Let's do a split and yeah, let's just go three. Um, so the rest of the deck, you got your Vraska's Contempt, you have your Kefnet that we saw on the mid-range budget version, and then uh, I'm adding in one more Enter the God Eternal, Liliana, and Ugin. Uh, into the main, Ugin deals with uh, enchantments or troublesome permanents, and it also can just create creatures and give us a draw engine. The sideboard, you got your Duresses, Negates, Narsets, Davriel, same. We have Unmoored Ego versus combo decks, but also I like picking off like opponents to fairies or against control where they have limited win conditions. Don't bring this in against decks that are like just creatures. You're not going to take like a Rekindling Phoenix or something like that. Uh, Ritual of Soot, Eldest Reborn, and a fourth Enter the God Eternal. So we'll run this back. Um, if you want to see like that stock 5-0 list, there's a lot of people on YouTube. Um, I think Merchant played it as well. So you can check it out there. I don't want to make like duplicate content. I want to try to bring out something that's a little bit more my take on it. And I've probably played with that stock version about 20 games, like 20 matches on ranked uh, gold right now. And you'll win two and then just get completely trucked by Esper and Grixis. Um, it doesn't really have the tools to face control. Kefnet's good, but like if you're just waiting for it to die, recast it, die, recast it, but it's not the best. It can still get countered. Uh, so we'll keep this hand. Thought Erasure into Sinister Sabotage, Liliana for late game. Opponent does go first, so if they have a quick draw, we're in trouble. If this is White Weenie, which it is, so we're probably dead. Kefnet's not what we want to see there. So hopefully they just go into like um, Snubhorn Sentry. Something with low power. It's actually better they play the Bodyguard on one than two because they can't protect their more valuable creature. Uh, so they got another one. No third, no third. Sweet. So we might be able to drag him out long enough here. Well, we're gonna sabotage whatever they play. Okay, don't want Gideon. Do not want to deal with Gideon. So here they'll need to decide if they want to go with the Venerated Loxodon play. Or a 
attack in, they go Loxodon. So, it does put more power on the. This match would have been a lot better if we were on the play. We would have been able to get under this and still take in the Gideon. So I'm just going to do this to restrict the power. I don't want the land. Okay, Kefnet could actually block pretty profitably too. So we're taking 10 here. Okay, backup Kefnet's not bad either. So hopefully they don't have like a Conclave Tribunal. Yeah, so we're dead to Conclave Tribunal, exactly. And we're dead Exaxes. That's where Mono White's really good. So, Enter the God Eternal, Ritual of Soot's good. Uh, another Eldest Reborn might not be too bad. What do we want to get rid of? Probably keep the Sabotage, Cry. Probably just get rid of, honestly, the Ops most likely. I just want to be as heavy on removal as possible. They're going to bring in the Ajani's. They'll bring in more Gideon's most likely. This is the mono white version, not the blue. If it was blue, then we'd want to see. Ah. Okay. I keep Contempt. Just play out with this. If the meta does shape out to have like a lot of one toughness, then fungal infection. It's probably the, the best one drop for them to play against us, to be honest. Just because it's going to be a while before they get power. Uh, here. Let's get rid of a Danto. Thief. They have the seal away, right? So I'm just going to put this in the graveyard for now. We're not at the point where we can really afford to tack in with Thief. We just do get around Cryo Carnarium, but we want to try to dig for Ritual Asset. less aggressive starts. The moment of craving can be problematic, but they might use it like aggressively. Put some toughness on them. Nah. Now that they flip Legion's Landing, we're probably dead. See what we draw next, but with this flip, it's a never ending and it hits hit their land. Does that? We need just get rid of this. But even if we hit ritualists, so they can pretty much just make creatures. And now that they're going to be holding this up, we really can't do much. Ah, uh, they're Benelish. So Ritualists are dead. Because from their standpoint, they shouldn't be tapping out beyond that.
Doesn't do enough now. Okay, so under the God Eternal is not bad. Let's get them to mill. Gains us some life and can block pretty much anything. They may blow the Unbreakable Formation. So it's interesting that they're playing this now, just to get three attackers. Protecting bodyguards. Okay, let's transform that. Just pass the turn. Get here. That doesn't do enough. So there's probably a play that we should have done that on our main phase. See if they attack in. We just block here. I don't think we want to get the seal away. Let's see what we hit. Does Cryocarnarium do enough here? It does. So at the very least, it'll get rid of the bodyguards and this guy. Still get exiled. Just play that out. No attacks. Don't want to get sealed away here. We can hold them back. They'll start making tokens. It's fine. Could have just made a token anyways. Another cry is not bad. We can wait a couple turns for that. So I'm just going to get rid of this now. Um, we can sabotage if need be. So they're just trying to build up the amount of spells they have. So it's two six nine so they could just make a token do we still have counter we still have counter so I'm just gonna do this now the reason being is they could have guaranteed to turn on snubhorn century where this they need a land Perfect. So I'm just going to attack in here. See if they attack in, they do. Uh, let's see what we hit. 
so opponent concedes. So we ended up grinding him out there after that slow start. Um, I don't think we want to change much. Davriel might be too slow. Everything else is fine. Let's run it back one more time. Usually with the mono white decks, if you could control their early swarm, they're just playing out like one mana one ones later in the game. Which are pretty easy to, to beat. Let's see what the opponent's up to. And this is one of the reasons I like the counters more in the main. So you just, we would have seen that game. If they resolved that Gideon, we would have lost. And then a lot of the, like, just blue-black mid-range versions with Pteramander. Like, early game you can't really play it. It doesn't block. It's going to get outclassed by pretty much every creature they have. Like, the Adanto token could outclass it early game. Um, and then late game, like, you have a 5-5, yeah. But they're usually going to swarm you at that point. Where if they didn't have the seal away that we would have seen, then we would have played, um, we would have taken the Thief of Sanity and then just start milling them and then playing cards off their deck to trade. Don't know what the opponent's up to. Really thinking about that sideboard plan. So after we wrap up this series, let me know if there's any other colors that you'd like to see or any other themes. Uh, I've been trying to do like an amass zombies deck like on a budget consideration But so many of the payoff cards are at rare that you can't really make like a non-budget version Like the Lords are kind of effect ones are at common but like Dreadhorde Invasion, Enter the God Eternal, the, the red one that makes your army fight Opponent being on the play is also beneficial for them Mono white, you play first. If the opponent's gonna waste our time, since it's unranked, we'll just call it quits if so. roping which I don't understand in ranked if you don't want to play just concede it doesn't cost you anything or unranked it doesn't cost you anything Fifty golds or a hundred, whatever it is, for the win. All right. So that's pretty much the deck. Uh, we saw a couple matchups. Control's still going to be tough for it, but um, let me know what you think. What you think of the series itself? If you'd like to see more of it, and if you haven't done so already, uh, make sure to hit that subscribe. Thanks for watching, and have a great one.